This is Taryn Lupo from TarynLupo.com, and I just love these wood burnt mandalas. I wanted to see how these mandalas were made. I interviewed Kate to find out how these are made from start to finish and what the process is. Hi, my name is Kate. I make wood burned mandalas in my free time. I have a store on Etsy and I just wanted to walk you through the process of how I create these wood burned mandalas. First you need to start with a piece of wood. They're all different types. Um, what I'm showing here is a birch plywood. Uh, it's very easy to burn on. There are other shapes and sizes and types of woods. Um, you'll find that some are softwoods, some are hardwoods. The kind with rings, the annual rings are kind of harder to burn on because as you go through each ring, it kind of stops the tool from moving a little bit. I get a lot of my wood pieces at Michael's. You can go to the store, get it online. Also a good selection on eBay and Amazon. Um, a lot of them come with stickers. Take the sticker off before you start working. And don't use Gooby Gone, that'll sink into the wood and ruin your end product. Um, so just sand with the grain until the sticky stuff comes off. Before burning a design, of course you need to either create or print off a design that you'd like to burn. Cut it to the right size of your piece of wood. And then use transfer paper, which is a carbon-based paper, to trace the design onto the wood. You want to put the dark side of the tracing paper down and then put the design that you'll be tracing on top of that. What's very important is that you secure both the design and the carbon paper onto the wood with tape. Fold the tape over and put it on the back so it's easy to get off and you would be taping both the carbon paper and the design at the same time so that they don't move around when you're tracing. Of course you'll need a wood burning tool before you start wood burning. There are a bunch of different types. I got this one as a gift about 10 years ago. It's called a Versa tool. I think it costs between 35 and 40 bucks at Michaels. You can buy uh, any type like this online comes with a bunch of different tips in this particular model. Um, and as I said, it's lasted a good 10 years of heavy use. You can see the color change there. That's how much I've used it and it's still going strong. This particular wood burning tool has a fixed temperature of 950 degrees Fahrenheit. When you're wood burning, you get a constant stream of wood smoke directly into your face. And when you're doing this all day long, that uh, can really affect your lungs. So I wear a protective respirator mask. It's very inexpensive online. This one is a uh, 3M and it costs about 10 to $14 online. As well as a protective respirator, you'll need to protect your eyes from the wood smoke that's constantly going into your face. Depending on the type of wood you're using, you can hit a piece of sap or bark with your wood burning tool, and these will become super heated and splatter into your face. I use a protective goggle that wraps around my eyes. A third safety measure to keep the smoke out of your face is to have a small extraction fan next to your working surface. Make sure the fan is blowing upward and not directly onto your working surface. The fan will instantly cool your wood burning tip. This particular fan extracts smoke from the front and blows it out the top away from your face. I wait about five minutes for my wood burning tool to heat up and then I'll test it on a tester piece of wood. When it's hot enough, smoke will rise from the wood right away and you'll get a dark mark. When it's not hot enough, you'll get a lighter mark as shown here. This is also a nice place to test your ideas before you start actual work 
on your design. As you're working, the tip can become unscrewed. Before you turn the unit on, make sure to tightly screw the tip in. After securing the wood burning tip, you can turn the unit on. Ensure that the cord is not dangling. Keep it away from kids and pets that could pull the unit off. It is a thousand degrees and will burn you. When the wood burning tool is not in use, always secure it on the stand that it comes with. On the wood burning tool itself, think of anything metal as being 950 degrees. Do not touch it. The handle stays pretty cool, so just rest it on the handle. Avoid resting the unit on the metal parts. This will conduct the heat through the stand and burn whatever is underneath it. With the mandala designs, I start in the center of the piece and work my way out bit by bit. There are no do-overs in wood burning, so take your time, be methodical. As you burn the wood, uh, you will get some wood debris forming on your wood surface. Just scrape those off uh, using the flat end of a knife. And um, if you make little teeny mistakes, you can scrape them with the grain of the wood using a little knife like this. But they can't be very deep or it will cause big grooves in the surface of the wood.
if you want to see all Kate's designs, just check out her Etsy store. All you have to do is click this little tab that's in the right upper corner here, or you can check the description below.